Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, continuing on my series where we're setting up a space scene and implementing lasers. And this video is going to focus on setting up projectiles and how we move them and how we detect collisions with them. So my last video covered four potential methods you might use to implement an, a projectile system with collision detection. Um, and the first method was using rigid body and applying a velocity to that rigid body or applying a force to that rigid body. The second method was using a rigid body with the collider and applying transforms to that. The third method was using raycast and transform. And the fourth method was animation. So this video is actually only going to focus on the first two. These two turrets on the left are actually actually have these implemented right now. These other two on the right are actually the same as the first, just with a longer laser. So the green are all rigid bodies that are applying a velocity at their creation. And you can see right now that they're obviously colliding and they're being destroyed as soon as they collide with this giant rectangular prism. I'll just call it the barrier. And the first thing I want to talk about is when you are implementing a rigid body, I'm sorry, when you're implementing a system that wants to use Unity's collision detection system and you're not sure how collisions work, you may want to refer to the collision action matrix, which is located on Unity's documentation pages. And the big key point I want to make is if you're going to be using the collision system in, in Unity, and you have an object that is moving, moving objects should have a rigid body. They are built for that purpose. There's a reason they exist. So don't just make an object that you plan on transforming and not give it a rigid body. If you're gonna move an object that has a collider, give it a rigid body. Um, just be aware of that. So I have created some prefabs, these two here. And you can see this, this is my rigid body laser. Uh, this is just using the rigid body uh, velocity and the TF, which is I short for transform. Um, but you can see both of these have a rigid body and a collider. So the rigid body's over here and the collider's right here. So I've also got two different scripts because they do act differently. So we'll cover those scripts right now. So we're gonna cover this rigid body laser Go to that script i just have it as laser behavior and you can see here i have another video that talks about having a lifetime for these things like that but um this script basically just says we're taking the speed which is 50f we're gonna get a end of life we'll determine that with start and then we're gonna grab a rigid body but we're gonna declare it in right off the bat so we have a private rigid body we have our start method and on that, we're saying our end of life is going to be the current time plus um, a few seconds. We're actually determining our, we're taking that and dividing it 150 by our speed. The faster the object moves, the more quickly I want it to die because the point is to kill it when it's not visible or when it's pretty far out. I want to, you know, so if this thing is moving 150, it's going to be gone. Go ahead and destroy it. So that's why I have 150F divided by the speed. Generally speaking, as it is right now, it'll be about three seconds. Then we have rigid body. So that RB, that rigid body RB up here, we're grabbing that from our game object. So what this is saying, if you're not familiar with that, is we have this object. This script is saying, okay, look for everything over here. There's a rigid body component. Go ahead and grab this rigid body component. So we're going to grab that. Now we know what the rigid body is. And now, right off the start, we're going to say rigid body dot velocity equals transform dot forward so we're saying move it forward times the speed and that's how it gets instantiated right off the bat now since it's a rigid body normally if you're going to take any kind of action on the rigid body within the life of that rigid body you want to use void fixed update to put any further actions after instantiating it so oh i don't know what i'm doing what private void fixed update um, really you could just say void 
So void fixed update. So when you are going to apply anything else to this rigid body um, within the lifetime beyond the start, you should put it in fixed update because that is the physics calculations. Don't put actions you take on the rigid body inside of update. They're very different things. Fixed update is has specific stepping, specific time frames with which it updates. But I'm not doing anything else with that rigid body other than giving it a velocity right as it's instantiated. And to me, that makes sense for the limited case that I'm going to use it. In my case, every time I shoot a laser, anything it hits, it's either going to destroy or by itself is going to be destroyed or it's going to ignore. If you have more complex scenarios than that, you need to make other considerations for what you're putting in your script here. But for my case, I'm not going to have that. The update method only has a time check. Basically, we're just saying if the current time is greater than the time we set as the end of the life of this object, destroy this game object. So we're going to destroy the laser. Lastly, we have our on collision enter. So when we detect a collision and the collision of the other game object. So this is the collision, the other game object. And if its tag is player, I'm sorry, if its flag tag is not player, then destroy this game object. So destroy this laser. So why do we say that? If I shoot the laser right off the bat and it collides with me, the player, and I destroy it, that, def that, that, that defeats the purpose of having the laser. And that can happen if you put your emitter inside of like a barrel and you're like rotating or something and, and happen to, you know, not do it correctly you know, you're, you're, which also includes making sure you tag your player as player. This is a tag I've created. But if you're the player, don't destroy the laser if it hits me because I instantiated it. You might destroy it immediately. Now, you should make sure you account for that by maybe putting your emitter just a little bit ahead of your barrel. Um, but generally speaking, we don't want to destroy the object because it touched the player. And it, because usually it's going to be touching the player, if anywhere, right when it gets started. The if collision game object tag is not equal to indestructible or and is also not equal to player, then go ahead and destroy the other game object. So if I've said the object can be destroyed or is not tagged at all or is something other than indestructible or the player, I want to destroy that other object. That's all it's doing. So going back to this though, we're going to go ahead and say, you know, you saw right off the beginning, we were shooting that and it was hitting this, and this is tagged as indestructible. So the laser being shot from this laser, from this turret, was being destroyed. Now, we're not dealing with these other turrets right now, so I'm gonna disable the emitter on all three of these. And I'm gonna point something out. So we are hitting this barrier and passing through. So now let's see what happens if we hit the target and play. Still dealing with that first laser we we're talking about. And it's hitting it. Obviously, its tag is indestructible. And it's hitting it, not destroying it, but the laser itself is being destroyed. So that's exactly what we wanted, right? Not quite. So there's a problem. We have a rigid body. And this is also a rigid body. The target is, and the laser is. And it's a they're prefabs, they have mass. So wait a second. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're hitting. They should there they should be some kind of physics, right? Is there? Well, let's go ahead and let's start this e, this laser here, which emits this longer laser, which uses the same exact script. So that script is exactly identical. The only difference is this laser is short, this laser is long, and you can see the only difference. Well, not the only difference. The speed's the same, different sizes. But let's go ahead, I'm going to show you and see if you can see that you're going to see the difference. And we'll explain what's going on. So I'm going to fire and look what's happening. The longer lasers are knocking it back. Are the longer lasers heavier? Well, let's go look at that. Well, the short laser is one. And the long laser is actually half the mass. So that's not quite it. But there is something different. This continuous dynamic. And that is the difference. Um, actually, it's not the only difference. The collider is longer, which gives it more room for error. But the continuous dynamic is something that we can actually go to this turret. I'm sorry, we can go to this laser. 
and set it to continuous dynamic and that will fix our problem as long as the turret is set to continuous um, and you should do this you should if you are anticipating a very fast projectile to be moving through you want to have your collision detection for objects that will be hit by it set to continuous the non the, the static object really it's not static it's a rigid body but the object that's going to be hit by a continuous dynamic object should be set to continuous so set this the target to continuous which we have and set the laser to sorry the laser prefab to continuous dynamic and that's going to fix our problem and so you might be wondering well what happened here and they are they are acting differently and I think the reason why is because this might actually be oh it's continuous this might be just because of the length of the laser it is longer but the same speed so but that that generally solves our problem we're shooting it backwards and let's go over here and take a look at what's happening here so and explain why why this was an issue over here at the target and not over here at the barrier and you could probably see immediately the biggest difference is we actually have a thinner target for these targets and this barrier is much thicker so when you have a very thick object you are passing through you have a small collider and I'm gonna to point to it right here let's get out of this because I'm kinda of mixing my camera up but this here you can see the sticker when it collides with this the collision may actually be taking place somewhere in between this but here I actually have two colliders one's very thin here and one's very thin here they're just squares and if you want to see them I can point them out you know edit collider oh wrong one let's go to this one you can see the collider is actually just this box you can barely see it it's very thin and so and for both of those they were very thin they just kind of cover the thickness of those targets on each side and what's going on is the update for the rigid body um, for the physics has timings and what was going on is even when it was hitting uh, it was passing through I want to point out something else that could happen with this is we'll, we'll say this is discrete again that's what it was by default and we'll set this to discrete again and we're actually gonna bump the speed up and I found at about a speed of 80 I keep confusing myself here sorry I'm jumping around at about a speed of 80 the short laser flat out doesn't even touch it just misses it completely no collision at all so when we change that back to discrete on the rigid body or from that discrete and set that back to continuous dynamic now we're gonna get hits even at 80 and even at you know let's let's just make something crazy let's say this is gonna be like 1500 and I put this up I think to like 8,000 uh, which is ridiculous but it worked um, and it didn't pass through so if you want your rigid body to work and hit and not have an issue with the timings go ahead and set that to continuous dynamic so let's move on to the second type the second type is a transform and the transform exactly the same thing we have continuous dynamic our target is also con is a continuous and I gave it a larger mass on this one I don't know maybe I know they the same mass but the same mass okay but I gave it continuous I set the actual laser itself to continuous dynamic like we did with the rigid body add velocity um, but remember rigid body we select we set the velocity on the rigid body so now going back to the transform we no longer have our rigid body we don't care about the rigid body because we are just moving the object and so we don't need a rigid body we're not we're not applying anything to the rigid body we're applying something to the object we're just applying a transform now, again we have our end of life but our, and our update now includes transform dot translate vector 3 spore blah vector 3 forward times speed times time dot delta time 
Our on collision enter is exactly the same. It's the same collisions. But we're going to go ahead and leave that barrier down. We're going to enable this turret. We're going to disable that first one. And we're going to fire. And we're going to have a problem. You'll notice that even with all the settings set so that we are, you know, have good timing on it, that transform is not hitting the target the way we'd expect. It's not applying forces correctly. It, it's passing through most of the time. If we increase the speed on this, you know, to like 80, we may not pass through, but it's definitely not what we'd expect. Actually, it does pass through, even, even with seeing some of them hit but do nothing. And I tried everything I could think of to fix this, and I couldn't do it. So be careful with transform. Don't, don't use transform with the rigid body. Yes, you should detect collisions, but that doesn't mean that Unity has any idea what you want to do with the force. Because even when it's, even when it's hitting, and detecting the collision and deleting the laser, which it's not always doing, it's not applying a force. And so you, if you're going to use the collision and you're going to use the forces, um, remember that. And if you don't care about it, transform might work okay, but as you just saw, we were still not actually colliding or triggering a collision each time because we weren't destroying even when they were going straight through. So doing everything right, you know, our transform does not work and it does sometimes but not every time so an unreliable method I really recommend against it so that's it for today's video next time I am going to cover using raycast and transform and we're going to cover using animation um, so if you want to watch that video keep keep an eye out for it. it should be coming up probably on Monday so anyway I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time